This is Criteria. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Criteria, the Catholic Film Podcast. I'm Thomas Miris, and I'm here with my co-host, as usual, James Miefsky. Hey, James. Hey, Thomas. How's it going? And uh, you are now in California. Yes, I am um, in vacation mode, except nice. not, obviously. I'm, I'm here uh, doing the show. <laughs> right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's um, great. I, uh, I w- I'm in New York, but I was just in uh, Charlottesville. Uh, for a couple of days on uh, right before the 4th of July and uh, had a great visit. Charlottesville is awesome. Um, I went to the the Jefferson estate at Monticello. Um, super interesting. Went up on went up to some orchard in the mountains. Uh, was there on some some sort of family business, but uh, managed to get some sightseeing. And the people down there were super friendly. Um, I had this uh, interesting conversation with several interesting Lyft drivers um, but one of them was this, uh, this young Afghani guy who was one of the last people to leave Afghanistan about a year ago. Wow. Um, and he was working with the U S army and, uh, like helping people get out and he didn't want to leave, but his friends were like, Hey, you know, they know you've been working with the U S army for like nine years. So you got to get out of here. Um, and the Taliban put his brother in jail for two months in like the hopes of like smoking him out. Um, and, uh, like getting him to come out of hiding right, and right. then his tribal, but he was already gone. So his tribal chiefs like went to the Taliban and like proved that he had already moved to the U S and then they let his brother go. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, so he just went, he just came straight from like Afghanistan via Qatar to Charlottesville, Virginia. That's so um, wild, man. What a, and he was just like raving about how great Charlottesville is and like how kind and respectful everybody is. Like, uh, and he's, I think he said, Virginia is the paradise of the USA. Um, well, I believe that. <laughs> so, so that was really cool. I and mean, he was clearly very, like, uh, very passionate about like being of assistance to the United States. Yeah. It was like good to think about before, you know, right before the 4th of July. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And were you back in um, New York for 4th of July? I was back in New York. I didn't really do anything. I sort of like wandered around my neighborhood. There's always fire, like local fireworks yeah. going off, but I, I couldn't actually see most of them. They were sort of like in the distance in various directions, mm. but they were blocked mostly by big buildings. Mm. Um, but I did, I had, I ate some good barbecue and I, uh, um, I watched the movie that we're discussing today. <laughs> Not all of 4th of July movie whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, but I watched it on the 4th of July. But not um, unrelated entirely to this conversation you had with this Afghani driver. I suppose not. Yeah. I suppose not. So today we're going back to the Vatican film list. Um, in the category of values is Louis Malle's 1987 film, Au Revoir Les Enfants, uh, which means goodbye, children, or goodbye, the children, I suppose, um, but probably more, less awkwardly, <laughs> goodbye, children. Oh, 
plus. Qu'est-ce que tu crois Allez, l'aviron Il a une sale gueule. Allez, tu le connais Il s'appelle Lafarge et c'est mon meilleur ami. Vas-y, l'aviron La récréation est terminée. On rentre dans vos places. Babino, dépêchez-vous. Louis Maul was, uh, this was a late career film by him. Uh, he was one of the, um, apparently one of the founders of the French New Wave alongside people like Godard and Truffaut, but not really remembered as such, mm -hmm. not really discussed very much as such, partially maybe because he has, um, he, he kind of changed up his style and his approach a lot on every film. Um, and, and I would say he has a pretty unassuming style in this film. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but, uh, he, he worked in both French cinema and in Hollywood. He, uh, some of his most famous films include, uh, a crime film called Elevator to the Gallows, which, uh, Miles Davis wrote the score for when he was in France. Um, uh, and, uh, World War II drama, Le Combe Lucien, which was, uh, a few years before this movie, um, Atlantic City, uh, My Dinner with Andre, hmm. um, and uh, some other uh, very controversial films, which uh, I can mention later. But um, this is a late career film from him. And it is based on um, a real experience in his life, which is that uh, when he was 11 years old, he was attending uh, this school, uh, Le Petit Collège d'Avant. I think is how it's pronounced, which was attached to a Carmelite monastery near Fontainebleau. And uh, like many uh, Catholic schools, they, they took in Jewish children under false names to shelter them from the Nazis. This was during the, the German occupation of France in World War II. Um, and uh, one day, Nazis raided the school and arrested three Jewish boys. And the headmaster, uh, a, man, a man who's name in real life was Father Jacques, but he's called Father Jean in the film. Um, they lined them up in the courtyard. The group was marched off the school grounds and the priest looked at them and said, au revoir les enfants, goodbye children. And uh, obviously Maul never forgot that. And um, he sort of was thinking about making a film about it for a long time and, and wasn't able to get up the gumption to do it until 1987. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, um, this priest, by the way, in real life, uh, is, um, uh, there's a cause for his canonization, um, since 1990, uh, Father Jacques, um, these three boys who were taken away, um, this is not depicted in the movie, they died at Auschwitz, and, um, or maybe it's mentioned, um, in the epilogue, I don't remember. Yeah. It is. Um, uh, and uh, the priest uh, died sh just a few weeks after the war was ended. He had been in the Mauthausen camp. So this is uh, a movie inspired by that event, but that event doesn't come until the very end of the film. Most of the film is this um, very real feeling portrayal of life in a sort of a French Catholic boarding school in this era. And um, this young boy, based on Louis Mal, um, whose name the, the character's name is uh, Lucien Quentin, I think, and uh, he he is in the school, and he is uh, sort of encountering this young this other boy who he gradually starts to realize is Jewish, uh, secretly Jewish, and um, that part of it is not true. Uh, Mal apparently for years before this film was made said, you know, I didn't really know the kid and I didn't even know he was Jewish until that day that they were taken away. And then after the film came out and became such a success, Mal started saying, yeah, we were friends and I, oh, I knew no. he was Jewish all along. Um, but, uh, anyway, yeah. So in this fictionalized version, we see it through the eyes of, uh, this character based on Mal's own childhood, uh, uh, Lucien Quentin. So, um, yeah, James, uh, 
I had not, I had seen this film once before a couple of years on uh, a couple of years ago on the old pre criterion channel streaming service film struck. Right. Um, but was this your first time viewing it? Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, I knew it was a world war two film. Uh, I knew it had to do with children, but I didn't know anything else beyond that. And I'm actually grateful because, uh, you know, I felt, I felt like my, uh, my experience of the film was sort of paced by the storytelling. Like I didn't come into mm -hmm. it knowing that this was going to be uh, a reflection on the Holocaust or on, you know, uh, these Jewish boys rounded up or, or on this priest, you know, all of this information was sort of uh, being presented to right. me as it was coming under the attention of this main character, Lucien. Um, so are you implying that I should not have given all this information out front? I mean, Hey, we're, we're, we're doing a synopsis, you know? Um, but I do think that you can, uh, you can, describe it as in as in as few words as a slice of life film about a right, catholic boarding school that. in in uh nazi occupied france you know and right. and that's that 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 really does capture i think the film even though it's dealing with it ends up dealing with a lot heavier things um right you know for so much of the film it's it's its concerns are you know boyhood and friendship and uh education and uh you, you know it's 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 really it's really subtle in its narrative development because maul is constantly moving the story forward but he does so in like such an invisible way um there'll be like a conversation that you overhear or just like some sort of interaction that the character notices mm -hmm. for a second before moving on. Something will be happening in one part of the frame. And then in the background, you see another thing happen. And, and there's this, this very subtle and economic and almost invisible way of, of delivering these plot points that when things mm -hmm. begin to emerge really towards the end of the film, it's not out of thin air, but it is, it, it it still has like a a sudden impact because everything's been yeah. so sort of like gradually, you know. I I began to realize that uh, this 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 uh, friend of the main character was a Jewish boy in hiding uh, right around the same time that the main character began to realize it. Mm -hmm. You know, I began to I began to notice that this this priest this uh, uh, principal of the school was an exceptional man right around the same time that the character begins to realize it, you know? Right. And, and so, so it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, I think there's a lot, a lot that can be said about this film, um, uh, you know, before even touching on the, the themes pertaining to the Holocaust, uh, or, sure. or this, this particular priest who, who really, well, I, I was just going to say who really in a way kind of emerges as the, the like protagonist of the film because mm -hmm. um you know like just taking that title uh i thought okay goodbye children maybe this is a reference to like goodbye stolen innocence uh mm -hmm. which which is which it, it certainly is you know this is like a coming of age story and it is about a certain loss of childhood innocence and a sort of growing up to the sort of you know, fallen state of things in the world. Um, I thought, okay, maybe this is a reference to the beginning of the film where, where uh, the first scene is uh, our main character uh, being put on a train by his mother. Now, all these other children are going on the train, being sent off to boarding school by their parents. And, uh, you know, although she doesn't say the line explicitly, I thought, oh, okay, well, good, goodbye, children. You're you're going off to school, and and this is going to be yeah. a chronicle of your time away. But that line, you know, doesn't come until the last two minutes of the film, and then it's clear, right. oh, okay, this is what this has all been about, and uh, especially on my second viewing, um, you know, I, I I began to pay a lot more attention to this priest and. 
and you also see that this this main character, this young boy, is paying a lot of attention to this priest. Um, yeah. So it's 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 I it's think, kind of fascinating. I think a lot of the film is about this inability to fully comprehend the events. You know, mm. like this this boy. To, to me, I mean, the what the last shot of the film is Lucian's face in like. And, and not just the last shot, but a lot of what we get in the final moments of the film in general is his face just staring like and like yeah. processing what's going on. Yeah. Um, and, and I would say it, to me, um, equally striking to the last shot where he's looking off and his eyes start to tear up as they've just left, been taken away from the camp, is the scene pretty much just before that where we get uh, this this – this slightly older boy who was like the cook's assistant at the school uh, who had been fired for stealing. And it, he comes back with the Gestapo and it turns out he was, he decided to help them uh, almost as an act of revenge and just to, you know, get money and stuff. And yeah, to d- um, denounce the, the school. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and, uh, and equally as striking to me as the final shot, the final stare that we get from Lucien is uh this look that he gives to this just this silent look that he gives to um right what's the name of the joseph to joseph joseph as joseph is just you know blithely explaining how he's betrayed them and what his reasons are and it's no big deal um and he's he's just this this horror you know um And uh, so for me, that's a very striking moment of the film. And um, and so another 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 moment of dawning comprehension is this scene where he's sitting in a bathtub. And uh, I think at that moment, he's I think that scene could be interpreted in a couple of different ways. But I think in that moment, he is realizing that there's something different about you know his friend uh, the, or this this other kid i don't know if they're friend quite friends yet and that's by the time right. that happens or not right but, right right um uh so this yeah. it, uh, i i bring that up because you mentioned this idea of things happening in the background or information being de- uh, delivered in a not very like emphatic manner right you know um that's exactly how the experience of ch- of serious matters often is by children right that's you a know, good point. things that adults are dealing with in the background. And you see things like, um, you know, uh, the uh, the priest uh, brings the this kid, this new kid into the class and he like is like holding his shoulders all the way to his desk. And it's like, oh, what's that about? This right. priest is like really solicitous for this this right. kid. You right. can see little moments of the, the that kid receiving special attention. Right. You know? Right. Um, but but it's yeah. things that are but it's not really commented on necessarily. It's just mm-hmm. there. You know? Yeah, yeah. I really liked that this film didn't like uh, wasn't like over careful to hold your hand through it. You know, uh, I yeah. think that that a lot of times films are guilty of this, like just like because it's so easy to manipulate the audience's eye and focus and just like okay, pay attention to this, you know, and right. and here that's really not the case. Um, it's and yet somehow you don't miss the things that that Maul wants right. you to to get you know um so so i think it's a real uh mark of craft you know that he's yeah. able to to weave this storytelling in in a very seamless way while yeah. also being like really faithful to the experience of a child you know, yeah. I, I think you that notice that's... the you notice things, but you don't always notice there. Sometimes you see things that the child might not notice, but other times you see things that a kid would notice, and neither of you, unless you've seen the film before, neither you nor the child in the film knows what to make of it. For example, right. when uh, uh, he uh, they're at uh, dinner or lunch, and uh, he's uh, what's the Jewish boy's name? Um, Jean Bonnet, and. Uh, and that's not his real name, but that's the assumed name. His real name is Kippelstein or Kippelstein. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, he, uh, Jean is is sitting next to this other boy, and um, the other boy offers him uh, some meat, uh, some pork, I guess, and he doesn't take it. Um, yeah. He just takes some of the other stuff. But it's a scene, right. and they take the time to show us that. Um, and uh, 
and and there's some plausible deniability about some things like him uh you know not being com- given communion for example because he claims to be a protestant uh yeah early early on in the film uh, but, but then but you that know that doesn't explain the f- the food thing you know right yeah yeah i it, like i started thinking about it right about the time they go to the bathhouse and you see the sign that says no jews permitted and then right. he's given uh a separate uh bath uh you right. know, instead of going into the showers and I thought, hmm, ah, hmm. Right. You know, and I think that like the the war begins to intrude on the experience of these children in different ways, you know, because there are other parts of the film that aren't characterized by this, uh, you know there might be they might be in the mess hall eating lunch and uh there's mention of you know be sure to share the food that's sent from home with your right. classmates and so yeah. there's like the echo or the nod to the fact that this is a time of war and supplies are scarce but otherwise it's the kids you know like bullying each other and like stealing each other's food and you know and and it, it feels like uh, sandlot or something you know that right i i i so appreciated one of the things i so appreciated about the film was that you know it, it worked on the level of uh boyhood coming of age story yeah and yeah. then it ends up you know sort of opening up to something a lot bigger which really is about the mar- like the, the the kind of martyrdom of a saint, you know, and right. uh, in in the figure of this priest, and so uh, so yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Um, I found myself thinking about you know about about <laughs> like how boys treat each other. Um, mm-hmm. I was, I, I found myself thinking about male friendship specifically. Um, I found myself thinking about, you know, the need for male role models and the role of a father. Fathers are conspicuously absent in this film. Um, in the case of the young Jewish boy, his, his father has been imprisoned, uh, or killed, uh, in a, in a concentration camp. But in the case of our, the main character, Lucien, uh, his father is just never around. His father's always working. Um, two very different reasons for having a missing father. And yet it's something that by the end of the film, the two of them are able to sort of commiserate on together, just just the absence of a father. And, you know, you think about that, that era in particular of World War II, how many missing fathers, uh, how many children grew up without the, that, that, that male uh fatherly presence right uh but then of course you know looking at the the teachers in the school and in particular the priests and especially this principal um you kind of see that uh that 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 vocation the the, the vocation of of these priests and these teachers sort of like stepping into the breach and filling that void one of yeah. the most touching scenes for me, I think, was the, and it's a long scene, uh, when they have like a movie night at the school and uh, yeah. they're watching Charlie Chaplin's uh, The Immigrant. Um, and we, we've seen scenes like this before in, in the films that we've watched. Yes, we have. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it feels like, it, it's always fun to kind of see a movie within a movie. Um, but then but I think this is the most effective of these kinds of agree. scenes that we've watched. So I agree. Far I agree. In the, uh, the portrayal of the audience reaction. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that f- for a film that's already, uh, already characterized by this sense of, of realness, of sincerity, of like slice of life, it, it that moment sort of gets even more intimate, even more, like up close and you just see people laughing together, but it doesn't have the the students and their teachers, right. Watching the film and enjoying it together. Right. You Um, see them responding to the beauty of this female actress, you know? Yeah. I think my favorite aspect of this, this film is because it starts out comedic and they're all laughing uproariously much in the manner of, you know, the, 
the scene where in Sullivan's Travels where they're watching the right. uh, the old cartoon. Right. Um, but then uh, they all get really quiet when there's these sentimental parts of this Ch- Charlie Chaplin movie where he's you know falling in love with this beautiful girl and they're moved by the beauty of be- the beauty of the woman, but also uh, kids and adults alike. Yeah. You know, at least the the lay teachers and um, and. Uh, um, and it gets really quiet, and then they start laughing again. Right, the comedic. Part. And then there's so a, there's another. I like that it showed us that that trend, that sudden transition. Right. There's another you know. moment of of poignancy when they get a shot of the uh, Statue of Liberty. Um, yes, you know, and 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 of course, the Statue of Liberty was a gift from the French, right? right. So it's like it yeah, has some sort of too. symbolic resonance, you know, a special symbolic resonance for for the French people. That's right. And uh and then, you know, uh what one one thing too that was interesting was so they're watching the immigrant um which uh we, I I had the chance to watch on the Criterion channel when they were doing their like uh special of New York City stories. Um, nice. And and I will mention that The Immigrant is included in the special features for Oh, cool. Au revoir les, en- les yeah. enfants in Criterion as well, so because because it's featured in this mm-hmm. film. Um, um so you watched it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh Okay. You know, there's a scene when the immigrants are all kind of being like roped off and herded together and in the context of the film it's very funny, you know, but I I I don't know if this was intentional, but I, I I imagine that it was because the last shot I think of that sequence is this young Jewish boy responding to that image of people being sort of pushed together and roped off and like herded, and he's not mm. he's not laughing, you know. Wow. And yeah. so so there's like this. There's this way in which Louis Maul is concerned in the film with uh like the different sort of levels at which the various boys are are experiencing what's going on around them. Uh it, this is explicitly mentioned at one point when Lucien is is sort of like thinking about uh, how January 17th, 1944, there will never be another January 17th, 1944. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah. And like one of the other boys is like, nah, I don't know. And he says to his friend, Jean or Jacques or whatever this Jewish boy's name is. It's Jean, yeah. He says, uh, am I the only one who thinks about death around here? Or no, he says, right. I am the only one who thinks about, about death around here. It's 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 incredible. But yeah. it's not true, you know? Um maybe from his perspective but uh but certainly you know his his jewish friend is thinking about death quite a bit at the end he asks him are you scared and he says all the time right so yeah it's it's a it's a film that like sneaks up on you with its with its themes um yeah but 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 that but that first sort of captures you with this uh depiction of of boyish uh uh you know, I won't call it innocence because a lot of the time they're getting into trouble. You know, uh, uh, you know, reading yeah. uh, Arabian Nights for its lurid uh, scenes, or um, right. you know, yeah, uh, beating up on each other, or, or or haggling with with this 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 young worker Joseph, uh, pawning things off to the black market in exchange for cigarettes. Yeah, it's a very real portrayal of school in that way, and also the difference between the different age groups. Because the older yeah. boys, uh, they're they're the ones that we hear smoking. You know, those are the ones who are most deeply involved in you know trading with Joseph. Those are those yeah. are those are the ones. Uh, we also hear them debating about Aquinas's uh, proof for God's existence at one point. Right, um, right. And then you know they're also leering at girls and and uh, checking out this cute piano t- young uh, woman who comes to give piano lessons at the school. Um, and then the younger boys are you know yeah well, everything you said, but uh, there's this sort of um, this unfortunate aspect of you know 
life with boys, which of course is not super uh, in, in a boys' school, not supervised all all the time, right? Perhaps not even most of the time, right? And um and uh, yeah, getting into trouble and uh, dirty dirty books, dirty pictures, um, and uh, it's kind of sad, but it's it's very realistic because you know even at um even at Catholic schools today, you you can't assume that. <laughs> The right. stuff isn't going on among right. the students. You right. know, if you're a parent, you shouldn't you shouldn't assume that that stuff isn't going on. Yeah. The students at any given, even a very good Catholic school, um, right. among some students. So, uh, but uh, yeah, and we get and then we see that uh, that unfortunate rite of passage, you know, from the older generation, where his younger his older brother is the one who gives him the the book. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, uh, Thomas, I think that this is actually one of the things that I was most compelled by in this film um and and i i don't know if this was on louis mall's mind but i i i can't imagine that it's not is how like sin uh networks together and how small sins are not detached from the larger very consequential like societal level sins right, right. because at the end when the Gestapo shows up, you know, it turns out that they've been denounced by who? By Joseph, who has been fired right. by the principal because he was caught sort of, uh, you know, stealing, first off, stealing supplies from the school and selling them on the black market. But then also, uh, you know, uh, trading with the boys for their private goods sent to them from home in exchange for goods that he would supply from the black market. And one of the things that we learn about this priest is that he's he's like especially hard on the rich, and not not hard in like a uh, like a, a spiteful way, but but mm -hmm. that he 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 sympathizes very much with the plight of the poor, and so he holds the rich to account in a way that that Jesus did, and um, and so so when this happens, he says, "There's nothing I despise more than the black market." And that that's kind of like a I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but that that sure, was yeah. kind of a jarring line for me because, you know, you think, oh, come on, like there's a lot of a lot of bad things out there. There's nothing you despise more than the black market. But then just made me think about about what that means, you know, at, in a time of war, in a time of want. Um, it's a it's 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 continuing to serve mammon you know, in this, mm. this like particularly selfish and insidious way. And, and all the more insidious because it sort of purports to be, uh, you know, like, like it would, it would like to hide behind a veneer of, of, uh, of charity of, of sort of like getting the, the supplies to people where they need them most. But Mm -hmm. Like Joseph says at the beginning, when we see him in one of his first deals, he says, the the richer they are, the more they steal. So this mm -hmm. is like a, it's an economy that's marked by injustice and marked by like, by, by selfishness and profiteering. And, mm. uh, and even though it seems kind of benign, you know, oh, okay. Lucien is trading some of his mother's jam for, uh, for, for some stamps. You know, yeah. we get this weird line from Joseph about how much like the doctor's wife loves jam and like <sighs> there's something erotic the there. in the mood. You know, yeah. you don't know if Yeah, but but like I think there is like a kind of That's nod says, to yeah. how Yeah. Yeah. That's what he says, but but I think there is a kind of nod right at the beginning to how these dealings are sort of precipitating to further transgressions somehow um yeah and yeah. no i agree and, and that, especially in the character of joseph it's effective because we are inclined to be sympathetic with him i think when he gets fired um of course of course and, in, in fact and, and, and to fact, assume that priest, he did some of this out of need you know right and the priest is in fact sympathetic right he says yes. to the boys he says i would kick you out of this school immediately if it weren't for your parents and now i have to fire joseph even though it's unfair so he acknowledges mm. that justice demands this, but that that 
that that that on some level it's not it's not fair that he takes the rap and that these boys are getting off more or less scot free. Yeah. Of course, Joseph is not able to see that, and Joseph does you know take vengeance and denounce them, and so in a very real way, the like sort of petty bartering of these schoolboys leads to the denunciation and the ultimate death of these these friends of theirs you know yeah. so 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 no yeah. no sin is 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 disconnected from the other you know um but but another cool thing that this film does is that yeah it does get us to sympathize with joseph we see joseph very much as a peer of these these boys he's he's their age um more or less and but he comes from a very different social background and he's right. picked on and he's he's also got a bad leg, so he can't be conscripted. He can't get much work. This is like uh, a a charitable thing that the the pre- the principal has done in giving him a job in the first place, right? Um, but uh, but but what I think is unique about what this film does with his character is that we we sympathize with him, but 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 we don't find his actions any less egregious for that. Mm-hmm. You know, by the end right. of the film. I think that a lot of times today in in storytelling, there is like this desire to to like humanize the villains and to like show us the the sort of psychological reasons or the the historical reasons like what, what what's what's driving this villain to do you know the bad things that he's doing or she's doing, and I think that you know in doing so a lot of the time, stories end up sort of. Uh, exonerating their villains and 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 they're they actually end up being no villains um and and right. so it, it becomes like kind of a denial of of the reality of sin but this is like the opposite this i think even though we see sort of what drives joseph to do what he does even though we we find ourselves sympathizing with him we're still horrified at at at, at the choice that he makes in the end and 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 we're not inclined at all to like let him off the hook. Right. And um and but but I think by that same token we also see how the sins of others have contributed to this. You know, I I think far from being a denial of sin, here the sort of explanation, the sort of digging deeper and looking beneath the surface actually opens us it conduces to a recognition of of the sort of um uh how how sin has saturated society uh from right. from the ground up from from the youngest ages to the highest you know hmm. and and i think that's another cool thing that this film does is that it shows us some of these social uh dynamics of 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 world war 2 of wartime you know we see uh what drives uh people toward resistance what drives people toward collaboration? Uh, you know, what drives people toward silent uh, witnessing on the sidelines? You know, it's it's, but we're seeing it all from the perspective of boyhood, um, yeah, and 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 these sort of high school and elementary school interactions. Uh, you know, something something crystallizes. Uh, or or comes into a sharper focus when it's sort of refracted through this this uh, this this perspective of this juvenile perspective. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although I, you know, I have to say I I, I have an issue with um, the use of child actors in films like this, where yeah. you know they're having the children say you know, impure things. Right. And, um, right. Right. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm just a guess against it. I realize that the, the, the implications of that would basically overturn filmmaking as we know it, because um, it would overturn because, because cinema, however much we might talk about one film as being less realistic in style than another cinema as a whole is basically a re- realistic art form right. by nature. Right? Um, right. Unless it's like animated or something. And so, um, <laughs> and so to say, um, 
you know, we just shouldn't have child actors, you know, or we shouldn't have child actors in these types of stories. Right. That leads us into a completely unrealistic territory. Yeah. Uh, stylistically, yeah. you know, um, and uh, so it's interesting to see what if if they we still attempted to make these kinds of stories, but decided that we couldn't <laughs> use child actors. Yeah. <laughs> you know what cinema would look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, um, no, I think uh, it's a really good point to make. Yeah. And I think that it's it's an important consideration because not a lot of people think about this. The fact that you're putting right. young children in these circumstances, and even if it's uh, you know sort of couched within like a, a, a day on the job, and you're surrounded by adults and people are taking care of right. you, and you, we're we're still sitting there imagining the children are there imagining these given circumstances, and oftentimes being yeah. told to speak things, you know, like that sequence when he's reading from. Uh, Arabian, Arabian Nights. Nights, yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 pornographic, and uh, it's ironic because this ends up on the the Vatican film list under values, right? right. And yet, the making of this film requires that children be sat down and forced to read this material and uh, have that documented, right? You know, to be yeah. part of the film. Mal was, um, you know. Not necessarily one for preserving the innocence of children in his films. Um, he he was involved with a couple of very controversial films. One of which was called a French film called The Lovers, which um, is associated with a very very famous Supreme Court case um, because a theater owned was uh, fire uh, fined for obscenity for showing this film. Hmm. This is a 1958 film, and um, eventually. Uh, was uh maybe it wasn't supreme court oh yes it was a supreme court case um which found this decision uh was reversed by the supreme court which found that it was not obscene and hence protected by the constitution but there's this famous they couldn't uh, the court still wasn't able to d agree on the definition of obscenity which uh resulted in a very famous saying from justice potter stewart uh i know it when i see it i'm sure you've heard this yeah. This line before yeah. about obscenity or pornography. Um, yeah. So so this was a case that came about because of one of Miles' films, this this famous quote uh, from the judge. Yeah. And then uh, he also made a film, I don't know the year, but he made a film called Pretty Baby, um, I think in 78, um, in which um, I'm now blanking on the name of the actress, but if, an actress who was, became quite well known and was a child mo model at the time plays a child prostitute. She's she, the actress was age 12 and is shown nude in the film. And this is yeah. 1978, you know, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. a, a 12 year old nude girl in a movie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that it's interesting because mall mall was raised in a very Catholic family. Apparently was very irreligious after his childhood, uh, for the rest of his life. But, um, uh, he, um, at least in this film, the way that he portrays the faith is, um, really spotless or the way he portrays the clergy, you know, yeah, and, right. um, and, you know, uh, the, the kids are not necessarily respectful. The kids call the monks, the monkeys, you know, behind right, their backs right. and, uh, and don't take them as seriously as they should. But then there's these scenes where, uh, obviously the fact that they're hiding Jews and one of them goes to his death for it, you know, but, but also, um, you know, when we look at a, a film like eight and a half by Fellini and his portrayal of his burgeoning sexuality, right. As a, as a child and right. the way that, uh, um, you know, the, the clerics at his school responded to him getting into trouble in that way versus the scene where Lucien goes to confession with, uh, father Jean, and uh, we see the end of his confession and Father John, John asks, and, and Lucien may not be honest about this in this scene, but he says, you know, have you been having any impure thoughts? And um, he's very non-dramatic about it. You know, he's asking, he's right. trying to draw out a good confession, but he says, you know, we all have them. And he's like, even you? And he's like, yes, even me. Um, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so if anything, you know, the fact that this kid, um, is getting into some trouble as are seemingly a lot of the kids in this school in terms of, 
uh, lustful thoughts and stuff. Um, uh, it can't in any way be blamed on a um, repressive uh, right. clerical authority, right, you know, right. not right. giving his him scope for healthy development, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And and that was something I definitely wanted to talk about too, is just the, the, the figure of this priest in particular, but all of the clergy yeah. at the school in general, you know, um, that there's there's a depiction here of the priesthood that's very beautiful, very noble, but also not sentimentalized. Yeah, I, 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 in that same uh, scene that you're referring to in the confessional, uh, <laughs> the priest says to Lucien, you know, your mother told me that you think you may have a call to the priesthood. Uh, and he's he tells him flatly, uh, I don't think you are. And it's a sorry job anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, you know, and, and that's, a, it's a little tongue in cheek. Um, but yeah, but there, but you know, it's like the film has such a concern for sincerity for, for like a, a, a realness and it doesn't lose that when it, when it touches on the priesthood on the sacraments, um, you know, that confessional scene, there's like a kind of, uh, you know, banality to it. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but, um, you know, as Lucien is, is saying his, uh, his penance, uh, the priest headmaster gets a phone call and is taking a phone call. You know, there's like, there's like an everydayness, an everyday right. quality to these things. Yeah, um, very much so. without, without, without them losing their, their, their sort of, their, their significance. Um, there's moments with the Eucharist in particular that are very interesting. Um, uh, with this, this, this young Jewish boy, um, he at one point goes up to receive communion. And of course, uh, father Sean, uh, I don't know if it's the same priest. It might be one of the other priests. I, but, I think it was, I think it is the same priest. Then, um, then his name is father, uh, father Jean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he of course sees this and skips over him. Um, yeah, and there's you know, a reaction where he almost gives him communion and then realizes, oh, wait, no. Yeah. And then, like, his eyes kind of, like, widen and he pulls back. Right, right. And, and you know, we're not really given much to go off of, of, of you know, what's going on here. Um, it could just be as simple as, uh, you know, this boy wanting to, wanting to, uh, you know, belong in, right. in some way or, or uh right you know, wanting to blend in even further or, or rebel against something or, but I think that there's, there's reason to think that there's a, there's a, a way in which he's drawn to the Eucharist because at the end of the film or towards the end, rather, uh, we get this scene of him by himself in the, in the chapel, uh, looking up to the, the, the sanctuary. And again, it's, it, there's like a, a, a banality to it. Uh, for lack of a better word, there's an everyday quality to it because, uh, he, like, it's just quiet. He's just in there, uh, and then a group of other boys come in with their music teacher for choir practice, and he kind of blends into the background. Uh, but they're singing this hymn, and it's not sentimentalized. It's not. There's nothing like sort of given to us to sort of amplify the significance of this moment. And yet it's depicted. Did you notice that he puts on his Jewish cap? That's right. Yeah. In that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at first I wasn't sure if it was like just a, like an act of defiance. You know, you're not supposed to wear a hat in church and I'm putting on my Jewish. But it might have been a religious I think so. you know, act of some kind. You I know? think so. I think there's um, something going on there, you know. Um, uh, not to say that he's, uh, you know, converting uh, – uh, to right, but 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 that there's there is some sort of spiritual uh, significance and, and interaction going on, uh, yeah, between him and Jesus, who is really present to him. You know, not just in yeah. the 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 sacrament there in the in the tabernacle, but but also in the person of these priests, uh, in the person right. of well, in in his body, the church, which includes these these little boys. You know, um. Yeah. So uh I guess the one thing that we see bad about the church is um 
uh, the sister, oh, yeah. the nun in the infirmary, who turns out to have been a collaborator as well, an anti-Semite. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, which is also kind of a shocking reveal within that that has no real precedent in the film. Right, right, um, right. And and again, that's another uh, one of those moments where it's easy to miss. You know, he, he, uh, Maul is is delivering yes, the information, miss, yeah. but he's doing so with a with a light hand uh, and. Yeah, because we just get like a look mm-hmm. and like an exchange between her and one of the Nazis, and then one of the um, I don't know what this man's job at the school is. He's the he's monitor. He's, what. he's kind of like the yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, and then uh, I think he says it was her, or somebody says no. That, the uh, Lucien Lucien says it was her. Lucien says yeah. it, it was her. It's her. And then she, he runs off and escapes. Well, she but, gives uh, the, it's her response. That was what clued me into it. She she like screams like get out. After he says it's her, yeah, you know, so it's like her response right. to that accusation was like the for me like yeah. the big like whoa, it's very um, intense. Th- yeah, there's something like um, yeah, very angry about it, and uh, yeah, yeah. So so it's 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 a um, it's it's like a multivalent uh, yeah portrayal of of the church and and of of you know the 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 church body politic you know um even as- the nazis get a multi even the german soldiers yes, get a multivalent exactly, portrayal exactly. i would say that's one of the more daring film uh, things probably about yes. this this french film right right um, early on we see a german sh- soldier coming to the uh convent for confession uh that's right yes yeah. later on and then uh yeah go ahead they get uh, they are playing a game in the woods and uh lucian and john get get lost and everybody else has gone back to the school and they're walking along the road and they see these German uh, soldiers in a Jeep coming towards them and they run away and they run into the woods and catch them. And it turns out that they've put them in blankets and driven them back to the school and they're very kind. And they say, yeah, we, we Bavarians are Catholic too. Uh, And, uh, and then, you know, somebody's, they get back to the school and one of the kids, like the the Krauts arrested them. And he's like, uh, and then the German guy says in French, could this Kraut have his blanket back? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then so. finally, there's this scene where uh, um, his uh, like parents visiting day, uh, Lucian's mother uh, comes to the school and takes uh, Lucian and his older brother uh, out to lunch along with um, with Jean, the Jewish boy. And uh, they're in this restaurant. And there's this old Jewish man sitting there and these French fascists uh, like collaborators come in and start harassing this Jewish man saying, you can't eat here. And um, there's this table of German soldiers sitting there minding their own business. And everybody in the restaurant is just getting riled up and upset. And you can see these German soldiers being like, we got, we got to do something. And then finally, one of them just stands up and yells, uh, get the hell out of here at the the French fascists. Like, yeah. leave these people alone. <laughs> and everybody thanks them. So – that in itself is interesting. Right. And then, of course, at the end, this Gestapo man and these soldiers come do come and take these people away. Right. But um, it's interesting to see even some differentiation yeah. or different aspects shown Definitely. among you know, the German soldiery. Definitely. Yeah. And, and that scene, too, is interesting because uh, the the French like militia man uh, who uh, who's demanding the papers of this this older jewish gentleman is so strikingly young he he's like he he's mm-hmm. he just the actor who's playing that role it just seems like he can't be more than a couple a few years older than the boys that were following in the rest of the film and yet he's standing there right. in this you know uh sort of assumed uh, authority in this uniform demanding the yeah. papers of this this man who's been frequenting this business for 20 years you know and that's why mm-hmm. he's there that's why they can't just turn him away because he's a valued sort of you know part of this establishment and and and, right. and so there's 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 sort of so much commentary going on in that in that confrontation and and all Maul has to do is shoot it you know and uh and I think that right. that's that's sort of like of a piece with the film, you know, in, in, in Toto, uh, because there's like this real sensitivity to, um, the whole network of these choices and these decisions, um, 
for good or for evil, you know, and how they're, they're sort of coming together and, 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 you know, that, that, that was the main takeaway for me is not just that yeah. like, no, no sin is private, but also that like no good deed is, is, is wasted, you know, right. Like by all accounts, it was a failure. The, the Jewish boys got caught. The priest was arrested. The school was shut down. But Lucien says, over 40 years later, I'll never forget a second of that January morning. Yeah. You know? And so so grace isn't wasted. It's a shame. Well, yeah, it's a shame that Louis Maul, I think, took it more of that's how when I learned how cruel the world is. Yeah, well, rather than like, oh, I should be a Catholic. He, well, but you know, <laughs> you know he made and followed the example of this priest. But he made this movie, you know, and he made this yeah. movie, and a lot of people have have gotten to see it. And and um, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm like, I'm I'm not a uh, like uh, justifying uh, apostasy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but but I I do think that's significant and kind of uh connected to this i wanted to read this quote from uh the real life uh Père jacques um oh great yeah so he's he's a servant of god as you mentioned and uh i was sort of just uh looking around on information for him and he's he's a fascinating guy um his cause for canonization has been open since 1990 um and mm. uh i i came across this blog of carmelite quotes and uh oh, cool. i guess there's a there is a retreat of his that uh, that's uh, been translated into English and is available somewhere because this is um, uh, a, a, a somewhat lengthy quote from a uh, a retreat that he gave, um, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it, it's yeah, it's interesting. And so, I, if you'll permit me, I'm just going to read this. Uh, okay. Okay. Love the communists. Adopt them. God has providentially permitted me, as a son of working-class parents, to become well acquainted with working-class youth. During my military service, during the war, and during my captivity, I was in the midst of workers. As a result, I am well acquainted with communist and socialist thinking. I've come to know many mid-level directors of these movements. I have found many first-rate men among them. They are ready to die for their ideal, and have often done so. They regularly devote their time to propagating their ideas and distributing their literature distributing their literature. By way of contrast, I have rarely found the same level of dedication among the respectable people who spend their time on boats or at parties and always look for enjoyment, even at work. They never sacrifice themselves for others. God deeply loves these poor people who are sincere in their conviction and confident that they serve a good cause. In all honesty, I am convinced that they will be saved. Do not speak disparagingly of them. Do parents speak badly of their children, even if they are wayward? If you love them and adopt them because they are the unfortunate children of the family, you will do them great good. Why not make yourselves their spiritual mothers? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, isn't that? Isn't that? And, uh, yeah, that's good. And, 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 and it sounds like the, 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 the father Jacques that we see in this film, or the father Jean, right. as he's named. Right. Um you know, he, he, he has a few moments, especially in this mm-hmm. homily that he gives on the parents' day when all the wealthy parents are visiting the, uh, the, the, the school. And he addresses it in particular to the youngest among them. But of course, he knows that the parents are hearing this too. And it's, right. and it's, it's, a, it's an indictment of, of, of wealthy, of, of arrogance and hubris sort of brought on by wealth. Um, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's an echoing of Jesus's stern warnings. Um, and, and I, I feel like, you know, you see that same kind of, uh, that same spirit echoed in this quote. Um, you know, there's Mm -hmm. a, there's a, uh, solicitousness for the lost sheep. And I think that that's a great thing for us to hear today when, when, you know, uh, there's all sorts of cause for angst and anger and, um, you know, uh, harsh judgment. Uh, Father Jean in the film, he, he leads 
the boys in prayer for the persecuted, for their victims, for the for victims and for their executioners. Uh, right. The whole point of his homily, you know, in in the uh, the responsibility that attaches to great wealth was to 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 point out that you can't withhold your charity even from your enemies. So, yeah, you know, it's it's just something to think about as things get yeah. more more fraught, you know, and and polarized. Yeah, that's great. Um, Thank you for sharing. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, this film begins with uh, the train station, as you mentioned, with um, Lucien and his mother. Um, and we haven't really talked about her or his family. Uh, he he is clearly. Um, I'm not sure if this is his first year going away. Maybe not. But um, but he uh, is loath to leave her um, and almost unable to do so. He's very angry with her for making him separate from her and go to this school. But she wants to keep him away from Paris uh, for safety. Yeah. Um, you mentioned his father is always working at this factory. He doesn't see, uh, doesn't seem to be involved very much with his family. His mother is this very glamorous woman, um, and uh, there's a great affection between them. Um, but there's also an interesting um, cynicism that we see of uh, Lucian's older brother. You know about women. Um, I think that he says he, he makes references maybe multiple times to you know all women are are whores or something like that yeah. and you know our, our mother's probably you know getting plenty when you know uh when when she's in paris and um it's just interesting to see that um um uh, i'm not totally sure what what role this family dynamic is playing in this film but it's interesting to see that the way that this there's there's a sort of abandonment um, and perhaps that not, that's not always the case with with children who are going to send to boarding school that they're being abandoned by their families. But that's the way we conceive of it. Who are not used to this idea of boarding school, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, there's this sort of, and certainly in the case of Lucian, that that's the case. And I think that it's interesting. Um, like I was saying, with the loss of innocence by these boys, I think that there's like a sort of a cynicism that trickles down from the older students um, to the younger ones in their experience yeah. of the adult world. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, you know how I was saying earlier that I think that a lot of this film is about the attempts of sort of the, the inability of children, children who are experiencing these like heavy events and unable to fully comprehend them at the time. Yeah. Um, I think that that kind of echoes what was happening in the whole of society with, you know, the Holocaust. Um, because, of course, any child can know um, it's dangerous when these Germans, these Germans are occupying our country. It's bad. It's dangerous when they come around. Um, you know, they certain they don't know that their classmates are Jews, but they know, you know, that once he knows his classmates is, Jew is Jewish, he he knows it would be bad for him to be caught you know, by the Germans. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, they're taken away and he knows that's a terrible thing, but he doesn't really know where it is. They're being taken yeah. and what it's going to be like. Right. And he doesn't really know the scale of it. And I think that that's for, I, I know that this is controversial among historians in very, uh, like how much did the people of various countries really know what was going on? Or how much did your average German soldier know what was going on and things like that? But uh, in terms of uh, you know the, the, the concentration camps and things, but um, I think and we can say the same of Joseph, right? You know he is betraying, betraying. He is doing something evil, but he, even he doesn't fully know what's right. going on. Um, and so I think that that probably is a reflection of uh, this experience of the children is probably still true of. French society as a whole, because as I understand it, they really didn't know know for another twenty years or so how bad the Holocaust mm -hmm. was, you know, and and really what had happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it seems to me that that 
in this in the moment thing, of course, you can still make moral choices. You still know that it's bad to, you know, be deported to, to, right. you still, you know, no, you still sort of know what your moral obligations right. are, but it's easier to, to rationalize yeah. things when you don't know fully what the consequences yeah, yeah, yeah. are going to be as well. Yeah. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. You know, it's, it's right. like, there's a sense in which we, we still don't really know what was going on with the Holocaust because there is this tendency to sort of isolate it as though like this was like some sort of freak bad thing that a few like really bad people did at one particularly bad time in history. And there's this like unwillingness to see how right. this is all of us, you know, that this is our condition, that this is what sin right. leads to. And so you see sort of these patterns repeating themselves in the ways that people are justifying heinous actions, you know, and it's not going to yeah. end well, but, uh, but all along the line, it's people who are, who are either, you know, actually ignorant or sort of willfully. So, you know, refusing to see like what, um, what the consequences of their actions are or how their actions are tying together with, with a broader diabolic agenda. And, uh, yeah, the film does a good job of, 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 of showing that. You know what I enjoyed is the scene when they're all fighting on stilts. <laughs> those are um, awesome. I don't know why we don't still have and those. They're, and they're all, yeah. And they're all like yelling. Uh, <laughs> they're all like role playing as like different like yeah. crusader characters. Yeah. He's like, I'm Richard the Lionheart. And the other guy's like, there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is, is his prophet. And then just like runs at him. <laughs> yeah. He's one of he's um, one of the Jewish kids too, which right. is awesome. Which makes also makes it interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He's like, I'm the defender of widows and orphans, you know. <laughs> against uh, against uh, like, the assaults of Christendom, you know. Right, yeah. right. So that, yeah, that all is interesting. Just like the way you get these little snippets of like what the cultural knowledge and the sense of French self-identity would have sure. been. Um, sure. And they're learning about the Catholic poet Charles uh, Peggy. Yeah. Um, who died in World War One in one of their classes, and they're talking about Thomas Aquinas, and you know, and uh, Bergson is mentioned by one of the older boys. Right. So that also is neat to just see that stuff um, in a in a school back when they used to educate people. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, this was a great. I was glad to uh, to revisit this this film yeah um, and i'm glad we have a lot of other world war ii films and some some more that deal with the holocaust and uh, i'm glad that we, right. we you know put this one earlier uh because uh i think you know approaching it from the perspective of a child is a good starting point yeah yeah now i don't think there are any actual war films in this vatican list no. Um, and we should definitely watch Saving got, Private Ryan at some point. Yeah, we've got you know we've got we've got uh, films about after the war. We did the Burmese Harp. We've got a couple of films dealing with the Holocaust. I think that Rome Open City. Um, I'm not sure if that's set during Nazi occupation or just after the war. Right. But again, it's not really about you. Know, we're not seeing war scenes. Yeah. Um, right. But uh, yeah, eventually we will have to discuss uh, an actual. Honest to goodness, war movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to go to Italy now. <laughs> um, uh, not not instantly, but in a few days. Um, and then I will be in upstate New York for the rest of July after that. So we'll have to find some way to record something cool. after we're both, yeah. you know. Well, I'm going to go back stable, to but... California now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Um, you can watch Au Revoir Les Enfants on uh, streaming, as far as I know, only on HBO Max. No, no. Or yeah. the Criterion Channel. The Criterion Channel, Yeah, which is where you should watch it. Um, I don't know if you can rent it anywhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, do, do watch this film. Very worthwhile. And it's a very easy to watch film, too. I know that we started off with people being led away to go to concentration camps. But um, I mean, it is sad, but it is also very easy yeah. viewing, I would say, yeah. as uh, French films go. Right. So, um, yeah, everybody, thanks for listening. Please share this podcast. That's that's your mission. 
until the next episode is find someone to share this podcast with and uh, give us a donation if you want to help support our podcast network at catholicculture.org slash donate slash audio. We pray for our benefactors daily. And also, if you want to include a suggestion for a film uh, that you want us to discuss, I think we would be perhaps more uh, more apt to discuss your chosen film if uh, – if you know there was a little uh, some smackers uh, <laughs> exchanged hands, um, but uh, yeah. So until then, uh, we'll see you next time.